Guys, she has 27 World Cup wins, 10 X Game gold medals. She's a three-time Olympic snowboard cross rider, and she is a pro on this season of the Challenge Champs vs. Pros. We have Lindsay Jacob Bellis on the phone with us. We are so excited to interview her, talk everything Lolo, talk everything Challenge, her life, so stick around. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Lindsay picked this one out okay. for the show, and it made me just love her for it. And she said that she uses this song. It's her favorite workout song right now. And I said, oh, this is my favorite pregame going to the bar song. So <laughs> I'm into it. I'm, I'm feeling it. But I love it. It's great. Hey, guys, thanks for tuning in. This is a special segment of the Challenge After Show here on AfterBuzz TV. We have Lindsay Jacob Ellis, pro on this season, on the phone with us. Um, my name is Jenna Bussier, your host. You can find me on Twitter at Jenna underscore Bussier. We have Pamela in the house tonight. Hey, uh, very happy to be here with Lindsay. And you can find me at Pamela Gross Jill on Twitter and Instagram. All right, I can't wait to talk to Lindsay. We Lindsay, so welcome. Yeah. Thank you so Yay. much for calling in. Thank you. Thank you so much. I feel after I hear that song, I need to go run some stairs. It <laughs> yeah. Just, it that's how you know you're, up, you're so a professional I'm happy athlete. That it pumps you guys up as well. Well, that's great. The other thing, though, is I'm always cautious for exactly that reason of listening to songs I really love while I work out because I'm like, I don't want to imagine working out every time I hear this song. But no, but I mean, if you look at it in a way, you know, going out and partying with your girlfriends, it could be a workout too. If you're that, going out and dancing, is, and you're, you're is getting true. moving, and you know, you're just you're getting things flowing. So yeah. there's there's really nothing it, wrong with that. It and is exhausting. That camaraderie is just wonderful. Yeah, like going out to a club with heels on, dancing all night for three hours. That's exhausting. I mean, that's a workout in itself. So. It is. Absolutely. Yeah. You know you've had a great night when your feet, like, you wake up in that position and they're stuck in the high heel position uh -huh. and you haven't, you know, you have, your, your shoes aren't on, but they're just stuck in that point. Yes, or yeah. you wake up sore, like your body is sore from dancing. Like, exactly. What did I do last that's night? Oh, I danced for three hours. Workout. Yeah. Always good. So we are so excited to have you join us. We have so much that we want to talk about with you. Yeah, um, so we just watched episode four outside, which obviously you were a star of in the sense. Yes. You and Lolo seem to have this back and forth tension. She has it a little bit with every every pro in the house, most of the girls, uh -huh. but it seems like you two are going back and forth a little bit. So where did this drama, I guess, start with Lolo for you? Well, I mean, I just, I'm someone who likes to take the protective stance and I saw Tia as someone who was backing down from a lot of that uh, heat that was coming towards her. Mm -hmm. And my charity is to be fighting for those who don't have a voice. And, you know, those are animals. And I just felt in that sense, like, Tia is just this lovable girl that you just want to see so much because she's so cute and mm -hmm. she's so bubbly and energetic. Like, it's a pleasure to be around her. So... I see how she was getting a little nervous in the scenario, and I felt I just wanted to step up for her. And, you know, I appreciate how Lolo is such a fierce competitor, but there is a way to balance that, and that's been, you know, what I've been working with through my last 10 years of being a competitor, and mm -hmm. finding that balance within life is so, so huge and important for anyone to find like a good happiness within themselves yeah. and that's what I've been working on and I just I wanted to be there for Tia because she seemed to be upset in that moment mm -hmm. and that's so this, why I decided to do that it was you know shoot from the hip the yeah. spur of the moment <laughs> yeah. whatever you want to call it like so was it spur of the moment I because wanted to do Lolo looks like, you know, she hinted at, oh, she had all day to tell me she was going to do that. Did you kind of think about it the whole day? Or was that a very, in the moment, you know what, I'm protecting Tia. I want to go in right now. Let's do it. How did that work for you? It was, it was definitely in the moment because mm -hmm. at the elimination the night before, you know, 
we put everyone in and I didn't even think of myself as a candidate because I was, I was thinking, Oh my gosh, now I have to pick somebody right now. I don't have any issue with Louise or Tia and Tia's like now this little sister, I don't want to throw her in and you know, that could have potentially been a game plan for her, but I'm a sucker for that. And I just, you know, I had asked Louise, you know, Louise, would you be super bummed if I put you in because Lolo's been taking some heat and she's like, Lindsay, you have to do what you have to do. Okay. And, you know, after sitting around for a while, it was hard to, you know, ignore the energy that had been coming to me. And I just decided, you know, this is a game ultimately. It's not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. But I decided to put Lola back in, and <laughs> mm -hmm. she flipped out at me as if I put her in the time before as well, and she really didn't take it that well, and and she made it seem like everyone was against her, but it was ultimately my decision. Do I want to try to pick fights with two other people that I'm getting along with right now? Mm -hmm. yeah, instead of, like, I don't I don't know. It was, it was definitely a hard decision because if we have the dream team who wants to start breaking up the dream team it's no one's going to be right. happy with who you start to pick right yep. and exactly. yeah and uh, you know unfortunately being the pros and being new to this situation like we're not callous in that way that we're not taking things personally where the champs <laughs> they see that they throw somebody in, they laugh, and they're like, "Okay, I'm remembering you for next time." Or they're yep, exactly. They're just how used they're, to it. That's how they're throwing people in because they've already been through this. This the, is the first time we've been through this. So if they have like a sequel, of course they're gonna have the Lolo against Lindsay. Kind of <laughs> just, this is, of seems course. to be the, the. It seems to be the story drama line, you know, for the pro team. So are we seeing everything? I mean, they're kind of pinpointing you two as the butting heads, the drama. Is everything well, accurate? I, I mean, that's a little, uh, that's a little far-fetched because we see that, you know, Lolo's had a hard time with interacting with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And it's just because she comes off as such this fierce, fierce person. But if someone keeps, poking and prodding me I'm not gonna sit back and just take it like my sport is very intense it's right. very combative I'm I'm not afraid of getting in the heat but <laughs> you know Lolo has proven herself time and time again that she's been a successful person uh -huh. and we're not negating that but she's taking it as that we're seeing her that way right and she has to know that that's not how we are seeing her. She's a great, great competitor, and we saw the heart in her. Mm -hmm. We continue to see how she fights for it, what she's passionate for, you know, yeah. but that doesn't take away the fact that every other athlete and champ that is there, we are fighting for something right. that is deeply connected to ourselves. Right. And... You know, we can't be pulling that away from any other, other people. Individual. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And to speak to what you were saying about that sort of, you know, you're not going to start drama, but you're not going to let anybody walk over you. It definitely seemed and was very clear from the first kind of episodes on our show. I was like, she just seems nice. She's flying under the radar. You know, she just seems nice, like a good competitor. And then this was actually good, I think, because we got to see that that's exactly what I think I said of you that you were the like walk softly but carry a big stick kind of person. Like, I'm not going to start anything. But it was very clear. Yeah. Like, you weren't making drama. But as soon as it sort of came your way, which I think started at the intramural game, it was like, why are you doing that? You know, can I tackle her? It was like, whoa, hold right. up. Like, you know, right. I'm not I gonna wasn't sit there going to sit there and be somebody. I wasn't going to be somebody who was going to start something. Right. I was just trying to stay back. I really didn't understand how the game was work, so I was trying to just observe, kind of mm -hmm. feel out the scenario. But if I feel that there's an imbalance, I feel like you know someone is uncomfortable. Like yeah. it's part of my just background to stick up for somebody mm -hmm. and I like I don't even understand why that's within myself 
it's so cheap. Your you dog. Know, it could go. <laughs> it, but it, dog. Yeah, but it could go back to when I'm a little kid. Who who even knows what our you know our mapping is in our body and how we re- react. A lot of times we react and we do things based on how we've observed things mm-hmm. through our lives. You know, Have and you... that's what makes everyone great and individual and why we've chosen to go after and support and fight for the charities that we are now you know, showcasing. Right. And and have you always been that way? Has that always been a part of your character to sort of fight for the underdog? I didn't realize it until, you know, I started talking with a performance coach and mm-hmm. she actually brought it, you know, to light that mm-hmm. that's what I do. Mm-hmm. And and I'm like, huh, I guess just <laughs> I guess I always do that. I guess I think I've always directed that towards animals, but you can direct I it towards to humans too. That, <laughs> that yeah. brings that brings somebody up when they're down, you know, and 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 fight for somebody because if I if I'm the stronger person in the moment, I don't wanna necessarily take it for myself that I if I can help somebody mm-hmm. then I will. So then what did you think about Tia's performance in the elimination? Because she, you know, she didn't do anything. (laughs) Just going to be blunt. She didn't really put up a fight. Well, I mean, and what I said before, but they they obviously didn't edit that out. They edited that out. But I was trying to tell Tia, I was like, you know what? You go out and do what you feel you need to do. There's so many different ways to test strength Mm -hmm. in a person. There's mental strength, there's physical strength, there's mm-hmm. combative strength. You know, obviously you being a surfer, you're someone who's free in the ocean mm-hmm. and loving how you're floating in that moment and riding a wave. There's nobody that you're fighting on that wave when you're actually mm-hmm. on that wave. You're working the section, you're feeling what the ocean is doing. And that's who she is. Mm-hmm. She's a carefree, very relaxed person. But she definitely has a competitive spirit and a fight within her. We've seen her be successful in every challenge that mm-hmm. she has participated in. And she was flying under the radar as this sweet she little was. innocent thing. She's so you impressive. Know? But then she, right, exactly. when, her competition. Uh, outside right? of the exactly. elimination, but, she yeah. was such a good but competitor. It, we were all shocked. Came to, when it came to a physical head-to-head challenge, I saw that, you know, there, this is not what she, who she is. Right. You know, she's not in the border cross gate. She's like not a I fighter. Am head to head <laughs> and getting in a physical, physical interaction. So I felt like, I was like, well, this isn't, and that's what sparked it. Yeah. So Mario, I'm like, this is not her. Like, I right. see, you know, she's upset. This is not what she was really thinking, what she was getting into. She doesn't want to risk getting hurt. Right. So I, had, I have an older brother. Throw me in there. Right. I, know I was going to say, do. were you surprised that Lolo then chose Tia? I wasn't that shocked by that decision. It didn't look like she was ready for you with the previews. Right. I, I'm, I'm not surprised that he chose Tia because I think that that was probably a smart move. Mm -hmm. A a lot of people, um, especially on the champ side, I believe, underestimate me. I was trying to just kind of cruise under the radar. I didn't want to be loud. I didn't want to show my strength Mm -hmm. because I really didn't know what I was getting into. So I was just trying to kind of cruise and feel things out. And so right off the bat, you know, those guys did not peg me as the strongest yeah. and I've definitely taken some pretty hard hits in my life with yeah. how hard I've crashed mm-hmm. and what I've put my body through so I know I'm definitely strong yeah. in a lot to, of sense and I never it to really the others. know what I can push my body to yeah also, it, it, I al- I always surprise myself, <laughs> which is exciting that it that that you're still able to do that even to yourself. Um, speaking of absolutely, I, I do have a question for you. This is sort of veering off, but this is speaking of surprises. So, in the first episode, this is my if you can give us some insider knowledge, yes. when it was Louise who had to select who she wanted to go in, and you guys decided to go with just picking limes because it was fair. 
Was it really? Mm-hmm. Did she really? Do we know who she, whose yes, name was really? Yes, we need to know this. Yeah. <laughs> was it really? To, to, to my knowledge, it was Lolo. It really and was. Okay. Well, guys, I you mean, heard she it didn't. First, she but... didn't, and like she, she like put the line down, and we saw. But since since MTV, you know, didn't <laughs> right. see, we, TV you magic. know, Louise show to the camera the line, they were like, "Ooh, we could spin this and try to." switch things up right. and Louise oh my god I love Louise yeah. and I don't know if it's just the accent that she can get away with <laughs> she's great she it's has elegant. this sarcasm without about it, her without it saying me like sounding right. mean like so she just throws it out there uh-huh. and it's just all you can do is laugh oh, at totally. I know I love it it was she's so like, sassy she, she helped she helped me keep this into perspective yeah and you know what that was that it was a game yeah mm-hmm. for charity exactly and the main purpose whether you won or lost at this it was to help raise awareness right. for your charity so even if you lost you mm-hmm. created this following to be like you know what i liked this dear girl she tried her hardest but right. she wasn't a fighter like face-to-face combat but she you know, I love who she was supporting, so I'm going to go support her. Yeah, and if you want to... Instead of, instead of turning it into something else. Yeah, absolutely. And um, it has to be said with also with you, you know, volunteering yourself. It reminds me, like, I have volunteers tribute. Um, <laughs> she went Hunger <laughs> Games on the She went Hunger Games on it. Well, so you was... see you, like, stretching and, you know, yeah, sort of getting up on the sidelines. That was so funny because that's exactly what Jess said. Uh, it is. It's like, no, um, don't take my sister. You, but um, if you if you if you know, yeah, um, Gus and uh-huh. he was talking to me, you know, before, and I was like, Gus, like, this isn't gonna be cool. Like, right? What would, should I? Like, what what would they do? Like, could I do something? I mean, it would make great TV. Yeah, I I'm sure throw the myself in there. Loved like, loved that. What well, we the, all what loved are the it. Pros and cons for this scenario. I could go out there if like I lose, whatever. I'm done. Right. Like it made a great poof, and if I win, then it's good. You know? Right. So it did. There was no downside to my scenario. No, well, I loved that you did that, and it gave Lolo a little shook. Like, right. hey, I'm not scared of you either. You know, you seem to be giving. No, me this and trash a talk. lot of the time she was just very verbally aggressive, mm-hmm. and a lot of people I think just backed down because a lot of professionals didn't want to make a big scene. Right. And she you know, Louise feel. and I were just like, you know what, you 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 can't you can't just come out here and just be super super loud and aggressive and not think that other people and other athletes of our same caliber aren't going to have a, a stay back in that right to be silent and then in this episode so, she turns the tables a little bit and she's having a one-on-one with Wes where she seems to show her softer side and get a little bit more sensitive and she says I'm bu- I'm being bullied what is your response to that that she's pulling out you know that the b word she, she feels bullied by you guys that was really aggressive, and I was pretty upset that she said that. And Louise and I both were not happy mm-hmm. with that because she was starting a lot of drama starting from day one. Like, she, absolutely. You know, was, I felt she was picking on Tia and forcing her to go into the pit first right. when we all decided as a team we would draw hats, and it was Tia myself and Lolo that would have the same chance to be pulled with the line mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. we sat back and we're like you know what that's fair we'll just right. sit back and like assess what will happen and mm-hmm. since we did that she she got really upset when her name was drawn and then right. Gus was trying to explain why that was why the men on the team chose to do that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And she got super upset and started to say that her charity was more important. Right. And, and well, we jumped on that right away. That's not right. what this is about. This was, it was really upsetting that it took that turn because we went from professionals, you know, really right. quickly to like not being seen that way at all. Right. And that was definitely upsetting because. Yeah. That's not how the whole team was operating. Yeah. 
But it seems like you guys um, hashed it out a little bit later because then you worked together. I mean, maybe you didn't hash it out. I don't know, but you seem to work together pretty well, all three of you, Louise, Lolo, and yourself, on the brain challenge, which well, we saw absolutely, later. Well, absolutely, because we have to, you have to put those emotions aside mm -hmm. and be trying to win for the person that's on the line. We well, have to put those things aside and try to communicate as best as we can. Yeah. It, it's you a know, little... and, that's, and that's definitely where the pro side of things started to come together. Uh -huh. So there are pros and cons to that scenario where we have those misunderstandings. We have those, you know, frustrations with each other. But then when something is on the line, we put that, that aside and figure out, okay, this is the task how are we going to attack it? Mm -hmm. And that's definitely how we all performed as pros, you yes. know, but then we see, we, we get out of that element and we're now in the elimination or um, the nomination parts of things. Right. And you can yeah. see how it just kind of all goes crazy. It, it does. It gets so political and, then and, and everything goes out it was the door. Not, and it was upsetting to see that she was saying she was being bullied when she right. did not see how she was affecting the other players. Right. That I was not being a bully. Louise was <laughs> telling how it was, and Pia was just being Pia. We <laughs> were not going to just sit by and let somebody kind of just talk right. and get away with it. And and well, and and then and then create create this you know victim image. Right. I'm that, sorry to what, say that's very no. harsh. I'm just. No, that's I, I want to second like you. Saying, yeah. I don't like being harsh and saying like bad things, which is hard enough for me to do. Mm -hmm. But she she needs to understand that this this is could be a learning experience mm -hmm. for any individual and seeing how I interact with certain people when I have weaknesses with somebody, it brings my attention to, okay, I see you didn't do this well. Maybe mm -hmm. this is something I need to work with. But when yeah. you constantly turn it around and say, they're picking on me, I'm the victim, like, no one likes me, it's, yeah. you need to be looking inward right. and say, yes. okay, Assess the situation yeah. I'm, having, I'm having a problem with this, and it seems to be a continuing mm -hmm. problem, so I need to alter a little bit to then help fit into the scenario and the team. Right. The team. <laughs> that is happening right now. Which, that that's what I've been, yes, I agree with everything you're saying. I think that, w I will say, I'm sure all of us have experienced at some time being the on the other side of, of a group of people not liking you. And it sucks. Mm -hmm. I get I it. I mean, that's that, anyone right, went to high school. Right, right, exactly. And I believe her sincerity that she was crying that night where where I'm agreeing with you is that it's very. But she was, she was upset every night. Well, what I'm saying is agreeing is that it's there doesn't seem to be any, not even not a lot, zero accountability for why is everyone, including I don't know him, but Gus seems exactly. like the most peaceful. And Tia, like if Tia, if you rub Tia the wrong way from what we're seeing, and again, seems like it takes a lot for that You might be doing something <laughs> aggressive if Gus is yelling at you, and if Tia is, well, is Gus disliking didn't, you. I mean, they edited that. A not lot, even yelling, but, but responding to well, you. Well, no, 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 no. They didn't. Uh, like Gus definitely raised his voice because he was like, he was trying to stop and be like, okay, listen to yourself. Right. Yeah. And and Lolo kept just like going up in the yes. octaves and aggressive and the the hard thing was trying to speak with her and work through problems and I tried to do this with her too it's that you know she, she got so verbally like strong right that you weren't allowed to have your voice and it, right. it just made it so it's like okay it's really hard to even have a conversation with you and give you my opinion right and only your opinion is coming through so you're only you're, only, you're not, there's no, that. like you said, there was not really any accountability. So right. it made it hard, but I think, I think as she's working through these episodes, I think mm -hmm. she's seeing that and she's seeing that, you know, people are not against her. They're just reprimanding her for her actions exactly. and maybe she's just not used to that. So you do think she's gaining some self-awareness? Like throughout this I mean, experience, I, ho I hope she? so. Okay. <laughs> I mean, there's there's never 
there's never a time in your life that you should not be growing and evolving mm-hmm. and learning. Ideally, but and does everyone? <laughs> absolutely. I feel like <laughs> it, yeah. I feel like if you're not doing that at, as a cell, you know, you're dying. Right. You have yeah. to be constantly adapting. You have to be growing and, and being aware of what's happening around you. So you need to be proactive with your choices that you're making with every interaction on life and sometimes that's you know nowadays with social media and everything like that we lose a little bit of that right so trying to rebuild those human interactions and those connections are so very very important definitely and I have a feeling that we'll see you guys go head to head I mean don't want to give anything away (laughs) but I feel like the way things are going it's a possibility don't don't spoil. <laughs> don't, don't spoil. Well, I, I I did give her the chance, but you know she seemed to be very upset with me, and I did give her the chance, but it it, it didn't go that way. I would have loved to have seen so. that happen, man. Oh. I was so upset. I had a feeling she was gonna say no, but when it did happen, and it was so quick too. It was hyped up. It was the cliffhanger, and in a matter of thirty seconds of this episode, it was, hey, I want to go against you. No. She well, that's what we. <laughs> it we was were, just a nah. I'm gonna stay with Tia. Yeah, we were all waiting on the edge of our seats for a week, and exactly the build yeah. up. It was like I volunteer as tribute, and then it just was like nah. Yeah. Moving on. She like, shut right. down real quick. I, and it was interesting because I thought it was funny how you know Wes and all those oh, people God. allied with her so early on, and you know I don't know the game, and maybe they were playing a mind game with her right. early on, or or whatever. I I don't really know their intentions. But I was a little shocked that people were not really responding to, you know, how strong I was being and they didn't really see me as someone. But you know what? I was like, you know, maybe they don't need to see my strength. I'll just, (laughs) well, have you, I'll keep just kind of cruising. Well, the thing that you have to know, I don't know if you've watched the challenges for years, like, like we have who do this, the show about Mm -hmm. it, but I mean, it's funny to me. I was like, oh, Lolo is the only one you all are literally pros in every way her temperament it's like like recognizes like they are reality stars and god love them we love mm-hmm. them yes you know we really much, genuinely yeah. love them but there's a did a hundred percent line in the sand in the temperament of every pro except lolo she's mm-hmm. got the same temperament she's as them canon. which is just blah, you know fly off the handle crazy it makes good tv because that's what they do professionally to some extent, is right. make good TV. Yeah. You guys are but all they know, like, but they know how to interact with each other and then just say it and then drop it and move on. Well, I but, mean, I think even those people have had to develop a thick skin. These people have been doing it for, you know, God oh, yeah. knows they've, they've all combined a hundred every, seasons, yeah. everything lightly. But there's been times like this is the first. Well, anyway, this is about you. But yes, we're not giving you the, the history of the challenge. My point is, I wouldn't be offended that your sanity came through, and they, you know, a West didn't come in and try and like suck you into whatever ridiculousness that because mm. you're, you know, you guys would be like. Psh, you know, flip like there's logic and reason has no have no place in for the for challenge them. is a different so, exactly. like, <laughs> like and yeah I at wouldn't first, be a... I was just very open but our first interaction with everyone I was like well how much info do I want to give them do I want to tell right. them how successful I am in my support or right. do I just do I just kind of just be bubbly and nice and just kind of not blink on their radar uh-huh and that's what I kind of decided to do right and you know they didn't view me as someone in the first episode they were very surprised they're like you're putting your two strongest people in and it's like well that's right it's like excuse me i'm yeah Yeah. what am i invisible over here well all of you pros obviously are strong in i mean you know jenna has your accomplishments (laughs) bullet pointed out there's like like 11 on here so i had to narrow it down to just a few before i was just reading off of your crazy resume I mean, of accomplishments yeah so obviously that is recognized but but again when you're in that world i guess it can become overwhelming i wanted to ask you oh like, absolutely the thing that was so overwhelming to me is just you never knew what you were up against right which gave me a totally new respect for all these reality stars because right you only see like the prep of it they get ready then they can compete but we sit around for hours waiting yeah. how we want to enter I, with the team and enter individually. And, the, huh. you know, it was it was quite the production right. on 
on that side, and that's not what the normal consumer is witnessing. Right. Had you so, watched the show before you became a cast member? Were you a fan at all? Um, it was a, I watched a couple of episodes, but I don't have cable, and I've been traveling nonstop since, you know, I was 15 years old. So right. if I saw the show, it would be, you know, in a hotel room. She's okay. And most of the time, I was always drawn to the action of the, right. what the challenge was or the elimination right. was, and be so enthralled by that. But then I'd be kind of turned off by the drama because I was like, ah, get back to what, like, right. what really matters. Right, what really matters, before. exactly. Isn't that so cool? Yeah. Like, so I've never been someone who's very, like, turned on by the drama part, and I don't really care for it. Um, so when you were reached so out. I was, I was excited. Yeah, go yeah. I was gonna say part of the challenge is absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, was there any hesitation there? Be because you know you're saying you don't love the drama. You're also training. You know you're going to the Olympics next year. Absolutely, and, that's what I. But I turned it into a mental training aspect right. and looked at it that way. And I was like, you know what? This is so different than what I've been in. How can I turn this into my favor? How can I benefit from this scenario? Every day we come into a new scenario we have no idea what we're up against but we're looking at the apparatus and yeah. the camps are just chattering away this is what we've done this is right, what we've done right. we're going to do this we're going to do this and the first day sent me for a whirlwind and I didn't know what I was up against <laughs> mm. so then I was like you know what I'm blocking that out and I'm going to wait till Vic tells me what the deal is and what the rules are before I start scattering my mind of all these questions and possibilities of what I could be doing right. in this scenario. <laughs> and it's an amazing so. testament to your, the way your mind works as a pro athlete and to accomplish what you have, you have to have, I mean, again, you're like maybe 2% of the entire world, like when, and, <laughs> and to even come into something silly like this and take it so seriously and so methodically and sit back and soak it in and come up with a game plan is so incredible that just must be the way it's like how can i solve this like how is this going to be the best like to go into something like this with such strength and passion is is incredible because well i think every professional athlete will look at it that way there's right in front of you how am i going to break it down how will i solve this right and not and not and not use this as an excuse as a crutch like we want we want to attack we want to figure yeah. out how to get it done Wow. And, you know, this could be a potential great way for me to go into this Olympic season. It's like, I went in for right. the challenge. I survived. I beat so. CT. I can beat you, snowboarding champ other person. Exactly. <laughs> so. It's just another challenge to prepare you uh -huh. for your next athletic event. You know, let life is a challenge and you don't know what so you're up against yeah. from a day-to-day -day basis and if you look at it that way and have that sort of open mind and calmness mm -hmm. when you are approaching everything you know and, and that's a challenging thing sometimes you'll be really calm sometimes you'll be crazy nervous or whatever yeah. but if you can relay that your, to yourself that mm -hmm. information and be calm and try to figure out a tactful way to get through this uh -huh. could help with life down the road, I would think. That is yeah. amazing you gather that from an MTV reality TV show. I, I, mean, I give you props yeah. for that. <laughs> what was your favorite part about being on the challenge, your biggest takeaway? Um, I mean, the biggest takeaway was the mental aspect and how I got better through the process and improved and not got, you know, not got caught up in the drama and and really mm -hmm. focused when I needed to and kind of just tuned out and pretended I was involved in a scenario when right. I really wasn't. So, yeah, and, you know, that was, you know, strike when you need to and, you know, be calm and collective so your mm -hmm. body can recover Wow. when you have the downtime. And, you know, that's what I've noticed in my body, what I need the most when in between races, and everything so I looked at it as trying to take away from it that it could potentially be helping me towards my you know next season okay well this is I have a sort of veering to a little more of a silly territory for the high drama of the other challenges you know they live in a house together and they're always getting drunk and hooking up 
obviously that wasn't going on <laughs> to the extent was, or at least you we didn't tell see us it. about it but, but yeah but having I said couldn't, that I couldn't even imagine having that sort of work well with the warehouse were you guys lit like what was the situation was it a block of time that you taped but you were living on your own or were you living as a team or not no living situation you would just show up at the warehouse how was it structured like you're together time. we were not we were not living as a team but we spent a lot of the majority mm -hmm. in you know our hangout zone uh -huh. but it was a lot of the time it was great to be kind of just interacting with other you know people on the show that they didn't know anything about and learn right. why their charities were special to them and it's so deep some of them hit you so hard and you're like yeah. god mm -hmm. I, I understand why you're fighting so hard and mm -hmm you know like everyone everyone has their reasons and everyone has their passions no matter if they're professional athlete or not right and that was the important thing that mtv was trying to get across yeah. that like what will you do for your passion what will drive you are you still friends with a lot of the other contestants on the cast even champs pros did you walk away with a lot of bonding and friendship absolutely it was really nice to be able to learn you know, people's lifestyles and histories, and I have a whole new respect for the whole reality world. I mean, <laughs> I you, I a like, respect, I like, like that word choice. You guys do this, and then you go and live with the people? Yep. Like, that's oh my God. so crazy. Wow. So It gets crazy, and that's yeah, how we love watching crazy, it, yeah. because they act pretty ridiculous uh -huh. in those situations. <laughs> It does get crazy. So, so. Were, were there, were there, was there like a best moment that you had during the filming that you, you know, will cherish um, forever? Or? I mean, it's hard to remember just a specific moment. There were so many times that, you know, we came together as a team and we were able to figure out, you know, the champ game and have fun with that. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was, there's so many moments and I take away so much positive from this whole experience. And at the end of the day, I was fighting for something that yeah. I was passionate about, and I, and I gave it my all for that. And you can see that I'm not afraid, and I, I'll go after it. Yeah. Who, in your opinion, is uh, – I won't ask you about the pros, obviously, because you're still very much on the show, and you're a competitor, so I won't ask you to go against your own teammates or yourself. But the, the champs on this season, who do you think is the best girl and guy competitor from the champs team? Uh, God, that's, that's so hard to say because there's so much fight within all of them. Mm -hmm. You know, Camry is very strong. Camilla's got that fire. Mm -hmm. And Ashley's that dark horse that mm -hmm. will just keep coming back and keep fighting. She mm -hmm. is. You she know, keeps and surprising us. That's yeah. Out. And that was, and uh, you know what was beautiful about her was how she tied that in with her charity and how uh -huh. there's so much failure with, you know, you know drug and alcohol mm -hmm. abuse and how you have to keep fighting through that and it's, mm -hmm. it's not just a single thing it's a family it's a unity yeah and that was that's a very very strong message and it, yeah you know all the guys they're all great and they know that they know the game and i'm yeah. so naive to the whole game like they're all they're all great competitors because they have the physical and the mental side so i can't i can't <laughs> Unfortunately, give us the Miss America yeah. answer here. <laughs> I'm but it's fine. Sorry, I know you, want you know, it, it's, okay. it's true. Everybody's, Everybody's true. so yeah. different, and it does it with the challenge. It's not like, oh, who's the best football player? Right. Who's the best snowboarder? It's very hard to pick someone that's the best at everything. Yeah, so it, it was a tough question. Right. But you could have your favorites, you know? Did you walk away with maybe a best friend champ or somebody who you made the best relationship with on the champ side? Well, I really liked uh, building a relationship with Tia because we both love surfing. Oh, and, so you, you know, surf too. she's so she's so young, but I still have that like liveliness, and I love getting in the water and trying to keep up with her and figure out like what she's doing, how she's reading the wave, and that's very like exciting for right. me yeah. because then it's pushing me to get better. And you know, Louise is such a love. I mean, I don't know when I would see her again next if she's bopping between you know london or la <laughs> right or wherever she is in the world oh i know you i know, love her she, she should just, definitely come and be she's a more so just she's just so straightforward and yeah. you know just so positive and you know when i was having a hard time she was you know ultimately there for me i'm just like you know Lindsay, 
keep it in perspective. Yeah. If you need to put me in, put me in. But it's a game. Right. It's fine. I don't want to do that. And then it's just like, you know what? I don't want to put you in. <laughs> right. Well, that's the other thing. This is a question that is more gameplay strategy on your end. So when you're the team captain and you're voting in, you guys have to play as a team at the same time you want to get rid of negative energy. Like, how... Like, I was surprised for when um, Sean was voted in. Like, I guess that was because he didn't perform well and you guys were being very diplomatic in that challenge. But I was thinking, but isn't he good for the team? Like, were those factors in your decision? Or True, but we, yeah. all, we also, I mean, I was thinking, I was like, okay, we already have a strong, you know, football player. Like and who knows strong. if we need more challenges of people crawling on us. Right. And two <laughs> big football players on us. Like, it was hard enough carrying one of their weight on right. the, you know, high ropes obstacle course. Right. It's yeah. like, okay. And then we did, I did go down to picking, okay, it was on performance. Like, he got stuck in the catch up. He couldn't, you know. It, oh, it's, that was the best. It's that like, unfortunate. It's just like, it was such a silly competition. And does it, you know, Yeah. It, we don't want to have to make those decisions, but it's like, okay, well, that was an obvious yeah. outcome, so it just helps make a decision. Right. What a way to lose, like, too, to get voted awesome, in on a ketchup and mustard challenge. You know, we're challenge. all awesome athletes. Yeah. We don't want to make the decision, but it, we are forced to. Um, on that also, in some of these challenges, it's such a crapshoot of, of what it's going to be, whether these people win or lose, and when they're playing for themselves, not for a charity, it's like $200,000 on the line. Have you ever in your career had an issue like that where it's literally on a stupid dime that something didn't go the way you needed it to and it cost you big time, and how do you handle that? Well, definitely. I mean, okay. just looking at my Olympic history, things could have panned out a little bit differently for me to, you know win on a world stage you know right. 16 years back and then you know at you know 14 years back and then at eight years back like it's 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 not been like the greatest run for me there even though it's proving myself on other levels right this time it's just it's just not how it pans out sometimes mm -hmm. and sometimes it is like border cross is so unreliable mm -hmm. and there's so many minute details and factors that come into play and it's just it's not going to be how it's going to be and right. it is my sport is similar to the challenge where mm -hmm. there's just sometimes it's not there it just pops up or you just don't have any control over it so I didn't feel like I harbored a lot of the personal you know withholding feelings as much as some of the other people right did. yeah you've learned from you know your past in sports and competing right. that you just next battle like you right. can't live in the past right. I guess that's it you live and learn right. and move on so then last question would you go on the challenge again or some type of reality tv competition show like this <laughs> Um, I would say it's possible. It depends on, you know, my schedule and what's happening, but it's not something, obviously, you know, I'm afraid of. So I'm definitely open to to new experiences and, and seeing what could happen. Well, we wish the best you know? of luck to you in your snowboarding career and the, and the rest of the challenge. Well, we're very excited for what we're going to see. So thank you so much for tuning in. It was great talking with you. No yeah. worries, if, ladies. You if, have a great if evening. If you want to plug, if you want to tell us about real quick as your sign off, tell us everyone where they can find you, mm -hmm. your socials, and your charity. If you want to give a shout out to that and let people see where they can okay. learn more about that, um, that my, would be wonderful. My charity is the ASPCA. That's the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. It's the number one non kill shelter and just educating people on making wise decisions when adopting pets and helping educate people on how to adopt a pet and how to care and maintain a pet and a lot of people you know undertake a lot and sometimes not understanding what they're really getting into and then unfortunately having to abandon or give up their animal and no one really likes that and when there's bonds that are created that's always hard um yeah. and my socials are on instagram just linked to jacob ellis and Lynn's L I N D Z Jacob Ellis, or I think it's L I N D S Jacob Ellis on Twitter and just Lynn's Jacob Ellis on uh, Facebook. 
Awesome. Well, thank you, Lindsay. We really appreciate you calling in. And again, best of luck to you. So much fun having you on the show this season. We really appreciate it. All right. Thank you. And for all of you guys out there, thank you for tuning in. Remember, we still have our after show tonight where we have Sean Merriman joining us live in studio, 10 p.m. Pacific time. So stay with us then. And thank you all for joining in. Again, my name is Jenna Bussier. I'm on Twitter at Jenna underscore Bussier. And I'm Pamela Jill Gross. I'm at Pamela Gross Jill. Just reverse them on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you at 10. All right. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the host only, do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.